How vital is a mother's touch? One man sought the answer by engineering a world without it. His controversial experiments on infant monkeys would expose a dark, profound truth about the anatomy of connection. The wisdom of the 1950s was chillingly clinical. Affection was considered irrelevant to survival. Babies bonded merely for sustenance. The prevailing dogma, cupboard love. Mothers were viewed not as sources of comfort, but as biological vending machines. But Harry Harlow, a restless skeptic, sensed a profound flaw in this cold calculus. He designed a radical, agonizing test to seek the true source of love. His work would forever scar the landscape of developmental psychology. Within the sterile confines of the Wisconsin Primate Laboratory, the stage was set. The subjects, infant rhesus monkeys, separated from their mothers just hours after birth. Harlow presented them with a cruel choice, crafting two distinct surrogate mothers. The first, a wire mother, offered sustenance, cold milk delivered through a metallic teat. The second, a cloth mother, provided only warmth and softness, but no food. The infants were placed in enclosures with access to both artificial mothers. Which surrogate would they choose? The source of life or the source of comfort? This simple, brutal setup promised a definitive answer to the ancient mystery of attachment. The observation began. Hours bled into days under the relentless hum of the laboratory. Tiny lives unfolding, unaware they were the center of a scientific revolution. The variables were controlled. The world held its breath, awaiting the verdict on love. The results would challenge the very foundation of what it means to be a parent. The results were immediate, overwhelming, and utterly devastating to the cupboard love theory. The infants spent nearly all their time clinging desperately to the soft cloth. They visited the wire mother only in moments of extreme hunger and then immediately returned. Harlow named this powerful, innate drive, contact comfort. It revealed a truth we now hold as self-evident. Touch, warmth, and security are paramount. A primal hunger, deeper than starvation, embedded in the very fabric of their biology. The clinical, detached view of childcare began to crumble. A seismic shift in understanding the infant mind had begun. The origin of affection was not the stomach, but the heart. The cloth mother was more than an object. She was a vital psychological anchor. But Harlow needed to understand not just the presence of comfort, but its role in the face of fear. He introduced frightening, monstrous stimuli into the enclosures. Loud noises, strange objects, a deliberate induction of terror. The terrified infants did not seek the food source. They fled, invariably, to the cloth mother. She provided a secure base, a psychological fortress against the frightening world. The wire mother, despite providing sustenance, remained untouched, offering no refuge. Comfort provided courage. The infants, once soothed, would begin to explore the frightening object. Emotional security, delivered through touch, 
was the foundation of healthy development. The maternal role was redefined, not just a provider, but a protector. Attachment was revealed not as a weakness, but as the very source of resilience. But the research did not end here. Driven by a relentless curiosity, Harlow pushed further into darkness. He sought to understand the consequences of a total, catastrophic absence of comfort. Infants were raised in complete, devastating social isolation. No mother, no contact, no peers. Some were confined to a device Harlow himself named the Pit of Despair. Total sensory and emotional deprivation, enduring not just for days, but for months, even years. When these monkeys emerged, the devastation was absolute. They displayed profound psychological damage, endless rocking, self-mutilation, and catatonic withdrawal. When introduced to others, they were utterly incapable of normal social interaction. They exhibited either paralyzing fear or explosive, unpredictable aggression. A chilling demonstration of how emotional starvation fractures the mind. It proved that early bonding is not optional. It is the essential scaffolding for psychological growth. Without touch, without connection, the capacity for socialization atrophies. The experiments offered a devastating glimpse into the profound suffering of isolation. Harlow had successfully modeled the anatomy of despair. But the tragedy of isolation did not end with the individuals. It cascaded through generations. The female monkeys raised in isolation, when artificially inseminated, became mothers themselves. They became what Harlow termed motherless mothers, utterly devoid of maternal instinct. They were neglectful, abusive, and in some horrific cases, lethal to their own offspring. Having never experienced love, they were incapable of giving it. A heartbreaking cycle of trauma, demonstrating how the capacity for attachment is learned. The studies highlighted critical windows for social and emotional development. If these windows are missed, the damage may be irreversible. An agonizing demonstration of the fragility of the developing psyche. The profound cost of emotional neglect written in the suffering of these creatures. Harlow had exposed the deepest truths about love by documenting its absence. Harlow's work was revolutionary, undeniably. But it was also undeniably cruel. The experiments ignited a firestorm of controversy regarding the ethics of animal research. The ensuing outcry led directly to the development of strict ethical guidelines for animal welfare. The psychological well-being of research animals became a concern that could no longer be ignored. A profound gain in knowledge, purchased at the agonizing cost of immense suffering. Yet, the legacy of these experiments transformed human lives immeasurably. Harlow forced the world to recognize the universal, desperate need for touch, affection, and secure bonds. His work revolutionized child-rearing practices and the conditions in orphanages and institutions. Hospitals began allowing parents to stay with sick children the importance of foster care over institutionalization was recognized. It laid the foundation for modern attachment theory, the dominant framework for understanding human relationships. 
a framework that continues to guide therapy and our understanding of adult relationships today. A deeper, more compassionate understanding of the power and the fragility of human bonds. The suffering of Harlow's monkeys serves as a somber, eternal reminder. Love is not a luxury. It is a biological imperative, the essential ingredient that makes life worth living. Their sacrifice, though ethically fraught, left an enduring legacy on the science of affection.